this way should be. Okay, you guessed it then. Who guessed it? Anyone guess it? I know we, we had some uh, some of you lot out there who, uh, who guessed it. Whether it was just literally just throwing it in there or what, I don't know. But anyway, skip off, folks. And look at this. No railings. This is literally... We thought, you know... You know, uh, let, let's, give, let's give London a break for Wednesday. Uh, we did think that they were going to be on, on nine operations. It's just going out to London City. Um, but as it stands, they were on Westerlies this morning. Direct southerly. Um, but look out for tomorrow, folks. I know a few of you are probably going to mention about the, uh, the, the strong winds predicted in, uh, in London tomorrow. So uh, we'll have a little bit of that. Trust me, I don't mind. It's, uh, it's going to be stormy. It's going to be wet. It's going to be windy. Uh, and we are going to be in the paddock more than likely. Um, for that, uh, got enough time to set up because we'll probably go there around about um, three o'clock in the afternoon when the uh, when the runways switch, uh, when the operations change. It may be because of the strong winds that they'll uh, they'll put the operations on the on the southern runway anyway, um, uh, just because of that shed effect thing. Uh, because we're looking at uh, possible strong southerly winds uh, gusting as well 47s something like that let's get on with the show now just to let you know where we are we're at um at this sort of like cul-de-sac here which is the um d and e gates uh, if you're familiar with uh, a lot of people are familiar let me just straighten this up hold on a minute a lot of people are familiar with uh, with where we're at now that runway there that we're looking at, this, uh, there's, there's a great website that you can go to. It's actually, if you actually go to Schiphol's website, ladies and gents, you'll be able to see, um, first of all, there's an app that you can download and, uh, to get an idea of, well, to get full information on. Uh, Jilly, I'm, I'm getting feedback. Something like that. What's that? I don't know. Okay, okay. All right, fair enough. Um, so this is the... Mm, no, I don't think so. Uh, this is 1-8 left uh, that this guy is about to go out on. Um, this is the intersecting runway. It intersects with runway 2-7. Um, you'll actually... I don't know if we'll get it with this one, but look out as I, as I pan on this jet as he um, hits the intersection of the runway, which is just around about there, I think. Um, let's just have a little look there. Let's just, yeah, just around about that point there. So um, you'll see it, it literally, um, here we go. Let's have a little look here. Did what stop? Uh, yeah, it did, it did. Coming up to it now. There, there, right there, yes. You can definitely see it. Uh, so this is gonna disappear behind the, um, behind the terminal buildings here. We'll see it climbing out, Dreamliner. Normal long run, but man, those wings are flexing up already, aren't they? Beautiful. We landed on 1-8 centre and of course 1-8 right is the very famous polder barn. Um, we're just going to, uh, we're going to position ourselves here folks until it closes at five o'clock and then um, we, we thought we'd do literally a whirlwind visit here just to sort of like give you guys an idea of, of what goes on here at, um, at um, Schiphol. And that runway there, the other runway, looks to me like they've got major works going on there. 
this is a, this is a new one for us, isn't it? In terms of the aircraft, World Fly A350. There's a first right out the box, folks. What's the story on that? Yeah, but I don't know if we've seen the 350. We might have seen the 330 or something. Have we seen the 350? Oh, as a cruiser, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not on the ground, though. It's Corundon, is it? Wow. Nice, nicely painted winglets like that. Whoa, easy, son. It was a bumpy ride up from Heathrow this morning. Emma Young. Emma Young's a brand new member. Yes, yeah, she's going to be cruising over Heathrow in a short while, apparently. You, you pinned that link, didn't you, Jilly? Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a great link about what, uh, uh, I have to say, um, I know that Luf, I know that um, Frankfurt are very active with their, their spotting, um, uh, you know, uh, locations and, and putting out stuff on their website. But um, if you take a look at Schiphol's website, you'll be quite surprised at the uh, level of support they give the local community, uh, telling you exactly where all the spotting locations are. Look at that. I wonder what she's doing. Um, Air Belgium, A330. She's got an odd engine cowl on there. Or is that just an optical illusion? I don't know, is that blue engine cowls? Arjan Vermeulen is a returning member. Welcome back, Arjan. Uh, so, anything coming in here? Unfortunately, um, this, this stand right here looks like this bridge is being worked on um, got some servicing stuff going on there got that um, sky team 737 looking smart didn't it? now you can get now and give you a good look at the um, at the 737 in terms of the um, the pre max edition those big huge shark clits on her massive great big 11 foot or so shark clits on her and there are the um, there are those uh, vortex generators you see those as something you don't often see because it's you know you get a very quick glimpse of the 737 um, but those and this is something that's not on the new max uh, variant uh, because it has a very pointy back end on it very sort of like dreamliner-esque back end on it but those vortex generators are to clear up clean up the airflow so that the rudder um, moves full and free um, that's interesting, isn't it? Look at the look at the size of that. Um... Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's a satcom blister, or are they offering um, Wi-Fi on that jet? That's crazy. None of the other jets that I'm looking around here have got uh, have got any of that on them. Early birdie. That's the old platform tower. Okay. Now, Alan Davies, Philip Lowry, Kirsty Allen. Yeah, uh, the, the, in terms of, 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 of where to go uh, if you're coming to Schiphol to film, um, there are some well-known locations, but there are also some um, unknown locations, uh, some of which are sort of like um, a little bit of a, a, a journey, uh, but I'll try and run you through them. The first is the Polderbahn, obviously, is a big spotting um area over there which is uh, being established for the uh, for the for the plane spotting community massive uh, parking area there's always a fella there that serves amazing chips um, and uh, a fence line uh, which is probably a good 300 400 yards long so it gives you a great perspective of the runway right in front of it great wildlife um, so that's the polder barn and that's 18 right isn't it I think Oh, it's Suriname, is it? 
That looks like Air Belgium. That's crazy. I think it's I think it's possibly undergoing some kind of maintenance, I'm not sure. CPR is right here as well. Yeah, as always the uh weather. Um, as unpre unpredictable as it is, doing absolutely the opposite of what we were uh, what we were planning today. Um, right. So, in terms of the airfield layout, folks, there is a small runway, which is runway two two, um, which is sort of like right over the other side. Generally used for private um, operations, but also from time to time you might see some. Um, some regional stuff landing on it like this uh, A220. He's going out at 18 left, 18 left, intersecting with 27. And we've got to push back. So somebody's saying, is that an old tower there? non-operational, doesn't look very operational. Looks like the clock stopped. Oh, funky shot. Yeah! Skip old funky shot, first out of the box. CFM 56 powered, 737, 700, 800, something like that. Jack Rolls Aviation, welcome back, sir. Uh, turning around, sorry. Oh, uh, Arjun uh, giving us confirmation that that is Suriname. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes, look at that, mate. Wow. Look at that old thing. I mean, it's not an old thing, but... <laughs> is it? Is it Lot? Wow. Wow, man, that is proper, that is. You can just imagine that on a Caravelle or a 707 or... Wow, isn't that beautiful, man? Looks great, fits really well. Penelope Bailey, KLM always looking smart. Yeah, they do. Flight crew and cabin crew always looking very smart. Aidan Campbell, I was at the O2 on Sunday, missed, missed the live stream. But nice to get. Uh, let's just see if we get anything from these guys here. Very unlikely, but. Because they generally won't look right, right? I don't know, no, I don't know. Here we go. Is he waving? Is he waving? I can't see. I can't see on my monitor, man. Lovely old school um, windshield of the 737. Look how square it is, man. No curvature in there whatsoever. Fantastic. Fire up right here. Pink Tito, good afternoon. Ex Aviator. Aviator mentioning about the backfire on the CFMs that we had. Is that my jet going out already, Chili? They generally do tend to pull the jets forward before starting up. I think it's a general um, 
precaution for the uh, for the ramp operators that they uh, that they don't start their engines until they're a certain distance from the toy mineral buildings. Max at home for uh, for one day and then bring that one into the road car. Year badge, wow. Andrew Hickenbottom looks like a knockoff Air Force One. Lots of people mentioning about that retro jet MW74, Nick Gray, Lloyd Bell. Uh, CPRs, I was going to say, it looks retro to me. Gillian Sankey, Squopey Polsky, Deborah Speller loving it. Blood Flame Rapture, love that livery on that. Probably won't hear it far up. Blue Sky, Lot, my airline. There we go. TU134, Steve Batty. Yes, you're right, man. Look that up on Google. TU134, Lot Airlines. Um, and you'll probably, it will probably be in that livery. Although I seem to remember Lot, uh, TU134's having that kind of like modern is livery, I don't know. Kelvin Grant, Stuart Ross, looking good. Pegasus A321 arriving from Istanbul in an hour, in an hour, Hamad Khan. John Grinham. Dyer 78, Elliot Reed. I got a double wave from a Delta 330 pilot when I visited the terrace of Schiphol last year. Yeah, it is, uh, it is quite common, I have to say. It's, uh, it's not something that's rare. It depends on which way they're backing out and uh, which gate they're using. Of course, this one here is being uh, is being serviced, so um, we won't get unless they fix it. They might be just carrying out routine servicing. Alfie Altman, we got a great one uh, from here. Um, I think it might have been the last time we were here, uh, where they literally slid the window open and leant out and waved. Ellie Morgan. Graham Thompson giving a shout out for the membership he received. All skilling, loving it. Mike Weaver. Lots of people liking that livery. Maybe a few waves today. There's the start up on that jet. Chucky. Well, Chucky. Um, fully understand we uh, we did put out yesterday a, um, a post that's why it's important if you're on Twitter or X whatever to uh, to follow us um, and uh, so that you get notifications about where we're at and what we're doing um, but also download the app it's very it's absolutely free See you later then, mate. <laughs> See you at nine o'clock tonight. <laughs> Dave Britton has gifted a membership. That's a very kind thing for you to do, Dave. Thank you so much. So yeah, that runway there, as you can see all the work equipment on that runway there, which is, um, that is runway, Two four uh, looks to me like there's a tremendous amount of work going on on that on that uh, on that runway. So you should get a full of free check. Usually do. Um,
You see the uh, inboard flap there, folks? Um, it's got, it's a split flap, which I think I'm right in saying that that's called a Fowler flap. Um, they also have that on the A321 as well. Digital David. One of the perks of resting. Paul Emerson, really enjoying the Aussie streams. There we go. Paul, that's great to hear. Great to hear. So many people giving great feedback about the, uh, the, Aussie, the Aussie streams. They were great, weren't they? Daryl Nichols. I think it's a shame, really, the Panorama, Panorama Terrace isn't as big or extensive as it used to be. Blimey, does it need to be any bigger than this? Does it need to be any bigger than that? I mean, I know those the, 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 the railings right up the back there, that, that, that used to go all the way round, but really, do you need to need anything on it? from those gates over there. This is where you want the dolly wheels in it. But that's just too much to bring, unfortunately. Paul Emerson. Uh, Avro, Henry S. Rab H. Ross, Dave Carr. Violet. Lana, Lady Holt. But no way, apparently, we got. So, this guy would normally, I'd imagine, or has he just come in? Oh, he's just come in, hasn't he? So, the freight terminal is over to our right, folks. I think he's probably just come in, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, look, the flaps are retracted. Jay Albar, uh, Albar. Uh, landed on 18 right in November as we passed the pole barn. I said, that's where Jerry films. Wife just rolled her eyes at me. <laughs> Paul's hijinks. Good afternoon. Oh, let's see. Um, good afternoon. Claire Bear. Andrew Hickenbottom. I love the chiselled planar nose and windscreen on the 737. Planar nose, I like that. I'm sure that's a uh, an official terminology for the shape or the design or whatever. But uh, yeah, it is old school, isn't it? The 737, just that front end of it, chiselled. shows 50 to 60 miles an hour on south coast tomorrow 40 mile an hour inland with showers uh, well we're hoping um, I'm gearing up for it folks I'm getting myself ready all the waterproofs are, uh, are ready for um, for tomorrow we'll have a go uh, Phil Sky that's his favorite 747 livery the China Airlines cargo Bucket loads of those in Anchorage, of course. And next month, April. Oh no, it's this month, isn't it? Are we in April? Well, nearly. Yeah, yeah, we're, 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 we're. Oh, airport medical services. Did you say Harry, Jilly? Harry from the airport medical services here at Schiphol. Thank you, Harry. And uh, thank you to all of the uh, emergency medical crew here at Schiphol. Captain Kirk, you just have to look at a 747 freighter. They're still gorgeous. Yes, they are. Oh, yes, they are. Shari Helia, nice to see a 747 again. Diesel 13. MA Sirius crosswind forecast for Heathrow tomorrow. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we're gearing up for it, folks. Don't you worry about it. 
going to be a sort of like from any any time from midday onwards but we will be monitoring uh, the operations that siren always makes me think of uh, miniature wonderland <laughs> do you know what i mean no you have to have been to Miniature Wonderland or watched our stream from Miniature Wonderland to understand exactly what I'm talking about there. Thank you, Harry. Airport Medical Services, EHAM Control Room. Gillian Sankey. Raptor X. Ellie Morgan. Any chance you get to see a beautiful 747 is worthwhile, it is, isn't it? One of their E-Jets. I think KLM are continuing to work through the uh, engine issues. I think they're done. They might be done. With their Pratt & Whitney's. You know, many other operators are uh, having niggling problems with the... Uh, and there's also been recently a, um, a notice gone out to a limited number of operators or, or aircraft registered or built between a certain time, etc, etc, that there were, but there were some um, problems with the uh, material construction, uh, uh, the powder that was used in manufacturing a certain um, element of the engine. But the, the, uh, the latest one that's gone out is actually... Um, about a, um, it's almost like the equivalent of what you, it's a fan disc really, the, the disc that attach, that the blades attach to, and I think it's in the, um, the high pressure, uh, the low pressure end of the engine, which is the front end of the engine, uh, the compressor blade disc or something like that, um, which is affecting a, a, a small number of aircraft, but I think almost all of the Pratt & Whitney PW 11s and 12s and all that luck, are, uh, have been affected by the um, by the fan blade issue. Yes, you will see the horses tomorrow. <laughs> Sue Cruz, just realised we're at Amsterdam. Okay, Trevor Russell. German Patriot. I've been bit to miniature Wonderland quite frequently, quite frequently, as I basically live right next to it. He's from Hamburg, German Patriot. Wow. It's a great place to visit. And yes, I would probably be going there quite regularly if I lived, if I lived there um, Lake Galilee. I'm just wondering whether, even though this is the heavy, um, area seems to be a bit more activity over in the other cul-de-sac which is uh, this one over here um, it might be worth investigating that um, in the not too distant future because these jets when they push with this gate out of action um, you see they're doing some work on it that uh, that sort of like puts that out of uh, out of alignment for us. We've got some heavies which are probably not going to be going out until a little bit later on, I wouldn't have thought. Beautiful 330. Now you can see, folks, the unique um, makeup of the horizontal stabiliser trim system that they have on the A330. Very unique. Um, why they chose that specific design, I don't know. Um, but it's not on any other Airbus aircraft. Um, it's just that much. It's almost like it's an area that they couldn't cover over and therefore it's just left exposed. And as you can see, she's in the neutral position. And during flight, the, the onboard computers will trim the, the, the horizontal stabilizers, um, trim stab as it's called. Uh, which are the big wheels either side of the uh, central control column. I don't know if this guy's coming in here. Is he coming in here? Yes, he is, but uh, I think he's 
no he's not no he's going out but yeah um, very interesting that the uh, that they have that almost carbon type look about it um, but it is unique to the A330 I, I, and they still use it on the current on the new A339s as well as far as I'm aware Aiden Campbell trading Transavia Boeing 737 in six minutes. No landings on this on this runway. Um, I don't think they ever land jets on this runway. Maybe from the other di yeah from the other direction. I don't know, but um, I've never seen aircraft landing on this runway in this in this direction when they're on these operations. Almas barn is that 18 center okay but still departing 18 left I'm guessing just track departures probably a probably a good idea I would have thought Aiden because the, we're not seeing any um, any arrivals on the uh, on the 18 on the center runway and certainly not on the polder barn because we've got a great big structure to, to our left any Morgan Bigfoot on the move should hear a fire up I would have thought Roy Van can because if anyone can the KLM livery is a bit revised on the new 320 and 321 but the nose blue cheek line is lowered so the whole nose will be blue and the cheek line at the end is a little uh, a little bit looks good yeah um, the newer revised um, uh, livery of KLM I, I, I've, I've been led to believe that apparently um, they've done that so that the so it's a lot easier when they're replacing a ray dome, is that right? I think you told me that, Jenny. Somebody told you and you, you've passed that on to me. Rohit Parkal, do you remember BA Open Skies? Uh, yeah, one of BA's many um, advertising campaigns. Marketing campaigns, Chrissy. I now need a trip to Amsterdam to s experience this terrace. Well, let me just tell you, I, I remember somebody re said the other day it was really difficult to find. <laughs> I tell you, it isn't. <laughs> because you come out of arrivals, um, you turn left, and this is obviously if you're in the... Um, I, think it's, I think it's relevant to all arrivals, isn't it, really? Um, all you do, all you do is, uh, all you do is you turn left. And there's a big sign, it says Panorama Terrace or whatever. Go up the escalators, go straight into the elevator, go up the elevator one floor, come out the elevator, turn right, and it's right there in front of you. You've got a, and then you just have to walk out uh, onto terrace number one, which is down below, and then catch the elevator, and up you go. But this was literally an exercise to see whether um, the Panorama Terrace was still functioning in terms of the, um, the railings. We didn't know until we found a very little tiny post from somebody um, yesterday saying that uh, they had visited here in whenever it was, was it November last year or something like that and, the, um, and it was open. Should have gone to P3 parking. Is that the is that the, the parking structure out on the other side? Um, yeah, yeah. It depends on the runway operations, doesn't it? Uh, from that parking lot, you still you get to see 
a little bit more activity that's over to our left. Um, Paris heading to Dubai. Is that viewing area airside, Simon? No, it's not, Simon. Open to the public. Um, great position. Uh, they've got a, a cafe there as well where you can go and buy coffees and stuff like that where I'm going to have to head in a short while. Um, luckily, there are some lovely people out here who are um, able to trust with the equipment. Tom Coogan, our KLM getting Airbus aircraft. They already have them, Tom. A330s. Was built to minimise noise pollution for nearby residential areas. There are some unofficial spotting locations at uh, Schiphol as well. One of which is um, a really cool position. And we will, next time we're here, we will visit all of the, uh, all of the locations. Uh, looks like they've finished working on this um, air bridge now. So that means that uh, I'm imagining that the gate position is open. St Ranger, it used to be easier to get to, now it's like a maze. I don't know about that. It depends on where you're coming from, really. If you're, if you're getting the bus here, I'm guessing, um, that may be the case. You need to sort of like weave your way through the airport um, to get to the viewing terrace. Uh, but it's in the far right-hand corner is the best way I can describe it. Now, on this runway here, if you look behind, um, you see those cars parked up there. Um, depends if you've got a rental, um, but you can park all the way down um, there at the McDonald's um, parking area. Now it's another location um, that has fantastic views of that runway that's right in front of them there. And that's runway 27, which is the one that intersects this runway here. <clears throat> so, yeah, lots of um, more sort of like um, provision being made. It's an official plane spotting location. But if you walk all the way down the pathway there, um, there are some great views um, just over there. And, of course, when I come and stay here, I'm always staying um, at the Corandon Hotel as well, which has its own 747 XKLM. You might want to watch the uh, the video of that aircraft being moved from the airfield here across um, the motorways and the intersections um, with just its engines removed. I think. Other than that, it was in it was complete. I think this um, jet bridge is now in operation. Oh, she's all lit up. Look at that. Two uh, 747 freighters sitting there. I don't know if they are. Hopefully they're just... The, obviously that's with Martin Air, which is the cargo arm of KLM. Martin Air Cargo, um, pure freighters as well. 
none of that long top conversion stuff. Um, two of them sitting over there, don't know what for, maybe, maybe maintenance, because it's quite a big maintenance. Look at the size of that shed there, man. Five jumbo jets in there, probably. Available 20 minute taxi time last time I landed. Yeah, it does all depend on um, on how busy they are, but yeah, it is a crazy taxi um, from from the polder barn if you're landing on the polder barn. And it can be upwards of 20 minutes, uh, depending on traffic, of course. Um, you know, if they're using that centre runway as well, which invariably they will do, um, they have to taxi all the way around the end of 18 centre um, to avoid. Uh, unless, of course, they get the opportunity to cross the active um, again, depending on traffic. But um, but yeah, it's a long way away. Now, if um, if there was ever to be a third runway at Heathrow, I would imagine, um, you know, if I was speaking to local residents, I would most definitely pitch it as having a runway that's um, a, 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 some distance away, like the Polder Barn like the additional runway at Frankfurt as well, which is only able to take a certain amount a, a certain amount of traffic, but also a certain size of aircraft. Um, if you were to pitch to the, um, to the local residents that uh, all, the, all the big stuff would remain on, on 27 left and right, whilst uh, 27, well, two, it would become 27 left, 27 centre, which is 27 right at the moment, and then 27 right would be the smaller runway, which would be for um, the, the the modern day um, super ec economic jets like the E2, um, the the Max 320 Neos, etc., etc., uh, and maybe one or two of the other variants, the bigger variants, but um, having to stick to certain noise levels etc it's interesting isn't it because you know way back in the day of the old days of london heathrow with the tridents um, i'm imagining that it was the case with all of their uh, um, aircraft that the um oh, well, uh, um you know they uh oh look at that there's two freighters coming there uh i'm guessing they've just come in off the polar barn there is, um, you know, even even back in the 90s, late 60s, early 70s, um, they were looking at and thinking of the, the local community. And that's kind of how the, the whole um, agreement, the Cranford Agreement happened with London Heathrow and the locals, uh, the local communities. Um, and also, I would imagine that uh, that is sort of like along the same lines as uh, as what they would do now. You know, the Tridents, they had to wait 90 seconds. Um, I think there was a point at which they had to pull the engine power back uh, around about 90 seconds after takeoff to minimise the amount of um, noise pollution or disruption to the local um, residents. John Walton, I was here last week. It's awesome and easy to find. There we go. There you go. Yeah. I mean, I can appreciate it if you're uh, if you if you're starting on the far end, the other end of the uh, of the. If you're coming in by bus and you're looking for the um, and you're looking for the terrace, um, it is quite well um, signposted. I have to say, is this Emirates Sky Cargo jet coming out this way? Is he taxiing out for departure? Uh, Raptor X uh, is that the one that we've uh, got one lined up to go out uh, aviation in 4k was at the Zurich plane at Zurich for plane spotting recently that is a humongous deck 
that they've got there. Yeah, nicely Googled, Aidan. <laughs> By separating the Poldovar from the rest of the airport facilities, Schiphol ensures efficient operations while also prioritising the comfort and well-being of both passengers and nearby residents. Good copy and paste. Nicely done, sir. <laughs> Aiden Campbell, Emirates A380, 861 on radar. Something interesting that I was reading about the uh, the second-hand market for Airbus A380s recently, and it apparently is that the uh, the Rolls-Royce powered variants are actually uh, carry more of a um, higher second-hand value than the um, than the GP70. Uh, GPW7270s um, or whatever they are. Diane 78 also confirming uh, Emirates 380 going now. Well, we'll see her um, taxiing out from out to out from our left. Oh, Annie Lance gifted a membership. Thank you, Annie. And she's saying that membership um, is on behalf of One Arm Bandit, my husband, who was gifted a membership and had his whole month made, paying it forward. Love the show. Thank you, Annie and uh, One Arm Bandit. Now, he's either, um, he's either uh, uh, got that name from, I don't know, it's all sorts of things in it, um, but uh, yeah, maybe golf, I don't know, like free machines or something. Paul Skilling, Avro Arrow, uh, Tim the Tool Man. Looking awesome in 4K today, he's saying. Oh, one arm Bandit Adventures. There we go. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, yeah, I always, I keep forgetting that we're doing it in 4K on, um, I didn't realize we were doing it today. I thought we were only doing it at Heathrow, but you know, all European stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, just left it running. Why, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E S on last Wednesday stream I had two coffees and was chatting all over the place. Oh right, okay. He got a uh, he got eye on caffeine, I think, by the sounds of it. Miles High, Aiden Campbell. Any aviation questions I can test chat GPT with Aiden Campbell. Uh, one arm bandit adventures, there he is, and uh, he's giving love to his missus Annie Lance. Uh, Raptor X private jet just landed. There's also a helipad down there. And there's, uh, there's one of the helicopters going out. Punk rock helicopter, look. Spiky um, rotor blades. Okay, let's just try and stabilise. I need to try and stabilise this. Uh,
shopping has been um, is that jet going out or is he just sitting there Okay, they're desperate to swap, swap their old 737s out, aren't they? H, good afternoon H, keeping a cheeky beady eye on everything. Grab H Lady Hole. Clever. Brian Stewart, Roy Van Can. Thank you, Roy. He's gifted five memberships. There's somebody on. Oh, new Transavia 321 Neo. Yes, um, I think you'll find. Oh, look at that private jet. That was a like a Gulf Stream or something landing. Oh, he is going out. Here we go. Thanks, Roy. Diane 78 has gifted five memberships. Thanks, Diane. And of course, if you have been gifted membership, um, your your name will automatically turn green, um, so that I will be reading your comments out. Of course, all my members' comments are highlighted in green for me to easily ident them. Toby Skinner, John, Joe Don, um, smiles in South African. Boro Technics. G'day Joe, hope you're doing well down there in South Africa. Beautiful part of the world. I lived there for uh, four years, way back in the day. Hi man. Adam Kokopchinski. Good afternoon, been a while since I last a live stream. Good day to you, Adam. Lee Class. Many thanks for the gifted membership. I know, I just, gonna, just caught a little glimpse, and then it's, uh, it's one of their 737s. Um, yeah, they've gone Airbus, haven't they, Transavia? Blood Frame Flame Raptor. Frederick Griffin, loving the show. J Mank. Yeah, so that's an unofficial position uh, where we're looking at that Emirates jet there, folks. It's a great spot because you get to see uh, the aircraft rolling on. Lots of um, activity in the um, in the dikes around there as well, the wildlife. She's rolling straight out. Look at it. They sometimes just look a lot bigger, those engines, don't they? Of course, that is the um, General Electric G9115B, I think. On that 200, I think all of the freighters, uh, 777 freighters, are um, fitted with the 115s just for that extra power. She might be light and go up quick. And she's going up now. Now, look at that wing flex, man. Scissorhands has upgraded to first class. Nice one, Emma. Nick Gray's gifted five memberships. Wow. Thanks, folks. Appreciate it. Thought we'd do something different today for you. I thought I hope you're I hope you're enjoying it. Something a little bit different. A break from the norm. And of course, uh, knowing that uh, Heathrow's gonna be a bit blustery tomorrow. These gates looking very empty, so we're waiting for a full and free movement check. Just did the rudder. I think we missed the FNF check. Aiden Campbell, I think it 
six wheels for a Boeing and four wheels for an Airbus. What's that? saying maybe you're lucky enough to see the new Silkway 777 freighter with the new livery. Wow, yeah, I've seen pictures of it. Uh, Adam Kokoschinski saying, I've noticed over the years that Boeing tend to have straighter wings that flex more whereas Airbus have curved wings that maintain their shape more. Yeah, kind of. Um, if you look, you'll be amazed uh, that this wing on the A380 flexes upwards of 13, one, three feet, folks. And that's outboard sort of like of the, uh, the far right engine that you're looking at there. That far outboard section of the wing will, will lift around about 13 feet but it's not as noticeable on the Airbus uh, as it is on the Boeings for example the 777s obviously the 787s with that um, with that wing flex built in blimey easy son it's gonna tilt over any now watch the um, flaps being extended here engines have started already uh, configuring the aircraft for flight, you'll see the flaps extend. And this is where you get to see the Fowler flaps as well. see the uh, flaps being extended all part of the um, configuration process flaps and leading edge slats Fredio 380 Sprat 67 Lee class bringing back good memories of going to the terrace for, for the day and getting the morning flights from South End and the flight back in the evening. Well, there we go. It's kind of what we're doing, isn't it? Hey. It's, uh, what's the Boeing setting for takeoff? Is it 10? 15 maybe? Hall got the afternoon off. Okay, looks like that 380 is just about to roll. We've got an intersecting 737 with KLM going out. Mac Cat Lady. Uh, is Transavia one with KLM? I think it is. Oh, they're, they're German, aren't they? Spot Flight Live, Air China 747 cargo due in about one hour and 30 minutes. We're not going to be getting um, arrivals on this uh, on this runway, folks. That 380 is literally. Uh, Gemma Chules, first time watching at this airport. Love all the KLMs. There we go. Thank you, Gemma. Great to see you, Mr. Big Daz. Do you have any plans to do a live stream from Frankfurt where there's still 740s? Well, we've been to Frankfurt, Mr. Big Daz. We've been there many, many times. If you just go on our stream, you'll be able to see all the many videos that we've done live streams from Frankfurt. Um, more recently, we've been at a great hotel at Frankfurt. Just wait for this guy to extend. There you go. There come the flaps now. You can see the flaps extending. He's doing... Uh, full of free checks or she of course always make the mistake uh, 
Ronan Fahati. Good question. Can every airport support an A380? Not every airport, Ronan, but um, most of the international airfields um, are able to accommodate the A380. It's not just runway length, but it's also um, it's also the gates as well, having the double decker um, capability. But yes, most international airports around the world uh, will accommodate, can accommodate the A380 indeed. You see the um, undercarriage configuration. Everything all goes up at once. Doesn't do, doesn't do that on the extension of the undercarriage on the A380. The, um, the outboards are first, the wing gear and then the um, body gear. But uh, on retraction, you can get probably quite a, a lot of uh, time. on all those years of not flying Avro Arrow. And you can, folks. Um, there is a there is an old Fokker up on the roof here. Yeah, there's an old Fokker there. And there it is. If you want to have a walk around it before you uh, report me for bad language, you are hearing correctly, it's a Fokker. Yeah, and no jokes about there being two old fuckers on the roof now. Uh, Roy Van Can, so far the 8380 activity for today. Uh, Steve Murphy, push back trucks at Schiphol, don't hang about. No, they don't. Uh, Aidan Campbell, A380 needs 3,000 metres of runway to take off fully loaded while the Boeing 747-8 requires 3,100 metres. Well, there we go. Um, fully laden, I'm guessing. Um, certainly seems that the Boeing certainly has a lot more sort of like uh, lift capability, shall we say. Which is a surprise because of the uh, obviously enormity of the A380 wing. <laughs> I'm just scrolling through the old Fockers. Oh, Cam MD80 saying, wish it was a DC9, yeah. Yeah. Tony McCall, when the 380 lands at Glasgow, they need to use special lights to stop airfield traffic while it taxes. Wow. Hey, look at that. It's not something we're off. We do see it from time to time at Heathrow. Egypt Air 320 Neo. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, Heathrow Airport light. What's going on? <laughs> Alabama man. Ross Tyrrell 380 accommodated at Gatwick, but a long walk to gate because the tail was too high for the sky bridge. Which is crazy. Yeah. 
<laughs> Tomorrow's escape plan. Uh, Sten and the non-plastic generation. Uh, I don't know Sten. Uh, if there are, they would... I'd imagine that if there were any uh, 747 freighters like that China jet, depends on how quick they turn her around, but being as this is the sort of like nearest um, runway because of the, um, is it 2-2? The 2-2 runway or 1-4? I can never figure it out. Um, wow, fair play to that crow, man. What a, what a dive, man. Wow. Has he got a little nest down there? He's got a little nest there. Or she. Bolted it past me. Got some babbies. Keep an eye on that. Because it came swooping down that. So any uh, no APUs running on any of these jets at this stage. Which is a bit of a shame. Look out over that triple sevens tail. See the split rudder assembly on the 777. Um, designed that way to minimize the, it was actually like a trim uh, stay, but that's uh, trim rudder, isn't it? A little sort of like um, little mini trim rudder on it, which is, uh, you know, um, works with the computers, works with the systems. But I'm guessing that's to uh, minimize uh, uh, flex and pressure on the, uh, on the, on the stabiliser in general, uh, something that was probably picked up during um, during the um, wind tunnel tests and all that kind of stuff back in the day when they designed the um, the triple seven. Got to say, uh, is that a three three nine with Delta going out there? Looks three thirty ish, and uh, again there you go. You can see the. Um, the horizontal stabiliser um, trim system, like we were talking about just now. This is uh, very um, unique on the A330 and carrying it over to the A339. Of course, the A339. No, that's a that's a that's a 33 330 stocker in it uh, with what looks like Pratt and Whitney's on it, um, as you can see the the squared off fence style winglet. Greg Lear, APU should shut down within 10 minutes after block in. Well, I know, I, I, I know what you're saying there, but I've, I've seen uh, APUs running throughout their time at gate, um, which is quite interesting. Um, even on international jets, I see, which is a bit of a shame, I have to be honest with you, because it is, is it really necessary? I know that um, some airports are looking to implement ground power systems that are run by um, Eco Run, you know, um, so as to minimise the fuel burn for uh, for APUs for aircraft um, waiting at gate. Henry S. High speed split lower rudder. Oh, okay. So that's a high speed split lower runner right I've got you so uh, obviously at high speeds they would uh, you initialize that um, that 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 lower split rudder a bit like the um, high speed and low speed aileron systems that they use Sam Wilson uh, the next departure I think it might be that uh, Thank you, Henry. Okay, Egypt Air 758 to Cairo. 
this one going out now. Um, thanks, Sam. So the low, the, the high speed split rudder. I'll try and say that one about a few. Lady Hole Delta 33323. It's a CEO. And it's off to Detroit. Thank you, Raptor X. It's an old Northwest jet, Roy Van can say. Uh, Avro Arrow twice had connecting flights delayed at Amsterdam. I didn't mind a bit all the more jet watching time. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do when I when they close here. Closes here at five o'clock this afternoon. Uh, once we're done there, then I'm going into the terminal and uh, going to do some uh, filming from inside the terminal, folks. A um, bit like we did in Sydney before it, uh, before it, well, yeah, it wasn't the camera's fault though, was it? It was, no, it was, no, it was, it was, yeah, yeah, nothing to do with the camera at all. Well, it was, it was, it was the battery, wasn't it? it was the, yeah. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Which means, which means the, uh, yeah, which means the internals were probably uh, in the same sort of uh, state. I would have thought. See how the uh, outboard ailerons, see how big the ailerons are on the three, 330s and 350s. Um, in fact, there you go. Engine start, split. Here we go. should come out on this runway. Oh really? Mike Russell, don't you need a work permit in Holland? No. of the fact that where our position is is uh, we will come back to Schiphol and we will do our normal full tour around the airfield like we always do just today we're sticking with the um, it's a bit of a shame that the, uh, the, 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 the the gates below me are not that active these jets um, in the next decade I would have thought in terms of it's a bit like the ULES you know the um, ultra low emission zones that they have around um, many uh, cities nowadays to reduce the emissions um, and these older engines because they are old um, will um, will make unfortunately make these aircraft obsolete however um, we of course have talked about previously the um, the re-engining of some of these airframes um, with what 
Rolls-Royce are proposing with the Ultrafan. Um, remember that the Ultrafan is not just, uh, even though they've started with the bigger engine, it will, um, it will, they are planning to build smaller engines for the likes of the, um, um, the, um, the regional jets, the short to medium haul jets, and of course these, um, these jets as well, these long haul jets. So there will be a sort of like a, 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 a Trent 1000 style, um, let's see him doing F and F checks there. Flaps extended, which is configured for flight. Oh, hello, 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 hello. Let's uh, just, um, oh, she's gotta be coming out here, isn't she? Oh yeah, here we go. Thoroughbred freighter as well, look. Diesel 132747 is on radar. This is one of them, of course. This is going right the way round the block. She's got to come out of this runway. She's got to come out of this runway because of the fact that uh, the other runway is closed at the moment. Normally, normally she would, oh, look at the both of them. Yeah. Normally they would go out of runway 24 which is to their left um, but unfortunately well fortunately for us the um, that runway is closed for maintenance by the looks of it because they would be all the way over here if it, uh, if it was open pretty sure that that 24 is closed for maintenance she's now turning um, she will probably cross the active i would imagine no she won't she doesn't need to She'll circle around the front end of runway 24. Unless, of course, I'm wrong and they are not working on 24, but there seems to be a lot of, uh, a lot of construction work going on there. Oh, don't turn all the way around. Oh, 24 is open. Or is it? Is it? Is it? Oh, it's... Come on, mate. Over here, over here, over here. That's it. That's it. That's it. Now you're gonna you're gonna turn you're gonna turn right any moment now. Come on, son. Make a right. Make a right. Yeah, she's too far over that taxiway now to be uh, lining up. Ah, oh, she's gonna line up for two four, is she? No, it looks like it's closed. It looks like it's definitely closed. Saw at Milan Malpensa, Julie. I don't know that did the Tiger flight. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. I really love your Tiger name. That's neat, that's neat, that's neat, that's neat. I really love your Tiger feet. I love your Tiger feet. Yeah, Tiger feet. Oh. <laughs> listen to her, listen to her. Oh. Maurice Poons. It's closed for several weeks, apparently. Great shot. Listen to this. Two hundred packs jet. 
Lady Holt. I think the uh, Silkway Jumbo is going to join them, you know. Mind you, they're turning now. Thank you, Ashley. Oh, she's got a new nose, look. Well, they've washed it, but she's definitely got a new nose. She's got a big nose, isn't she? Now you can quite clearly see the um, the nose, the, the freight loading nose on the jumbo jet. Well, the pure freighter jumbo jet. The one behind it is a Boeing conversion freighter. Oh wow! Look at this bad boy. Look at her. Look, all bits and bobs hanging off of her. Wow! Nice. Wow, she's a proper workhorse. Look at that. Look at all the panelling and everything, man. Yeah. Oh, she's a beauty, man. That's a rare catch, that is. Don't think we've ever seen that one. God bless you. Yeah, good, good point. Um, believe it or not, the um, one of the biggest commodities to be flown out of here is indeed flowers. See, no load, nose load on this. This is an ex-passenger jet being converted into freight. <clears throat> of course, they do convert it with a freight door. Put a big freight door in it as a load. So we could have, I think we've got two 747s. Well, if, if it all lines up right, Where's this guy going? Hold on a minute, let's just... Tony McCall saying we've seen it at Heathrow a few months back. Oh, shit, I would have remembered. We've seen a Silkway at Heathrow, yes, but...
look at it. The class, uh, the Saudi is X Asiana 747. Elliot Reed, 18 years old, this Silkway. X Mass Cargo, M A S. Mass is a Malaysian Airlines system. Is this going to be three jumbos going out at once then? From what I'm looking at, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Years old, the South Saudi jet lady holds saying. Wow. Yeah, Fredio. Loving that grace uh, nose on the uh, Silkway jet. Go together, mate. Wow. Oh, you can't go now. <laughs> Fair play, Les. Uh, Roy Van Can, yes, I'm aware of the uh, frequency being able to listen to um, to the radio, um, to the tower. But we have um, discussed this on many, many occasions, tried it, tested it, and um, it dilutes what we try and do. Dane Grayson, kudos to the cargo crews getting three jumbos out at the same time. Wow, well, yeah. All lined up together as well, man. Okay, number one, Cliff, take off. First out of the blocks.
Nanjing, Riyadh and then back. Steve Wakelum. Couldn't say it better. Beautiful looking aeroplane, isn't it? Look at the wings drooping with all that fuel, man. The outboard segments. Oh, wow. You see the wing flex then as it went over the intersection. Now look at the wing flexing up already, man. Look at that. I've got my eye on the uh, Silkway jet. Oh, she's beautiful though, man. Look at her. Look at that nose. That's a proper workhorse. That is, look. Where's she nicked that nose from? Maybe one of their other jets, actually, because that is sort of like along the same lines. They've got blue and silver and... I don't know. She's got a big smiley face on her. Look at that. Big happy smiley face look. <laughs> look at that. Wow, she's hammering it. Look at that, it's a beautiful one. Skygate livery. Here. Very easily, Lars. It's absolutely free of charge. Doesn't cost a penny. Open till five o'clock in the winter. Um, and this coming Sunday, um, it's going to be extended uh, during the summer months through till 9 p.m., I believe. What's that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful. I think, I think this jet's about to push. Um, still got the chocks, hey up chocks. I was just thinking on my way through uh, through customs there, Jilly, that uh, if, if they had, uh, if, you, if you went to a, a major international airport in Yorkshire, um, you'd, you'd have to go through channel um, uh, Nout to declare. <laughs> See, here's another thing, folks, that we don't, oh, engine start.
Yeah! At gate engine run. Now you know what? When I walked through, I think we came in, when I walked through the gates over here to my right, I saw them working. The, the engine cows were up on the number one engine. So that's what they just started on. Ha <laughs> ha yeah. This guy may be coming in here. He is, he is, look, they're waiting for him. folks that by the time before we leave that these three aircraft that are lined up here will go um, I think they're running both the engines on that triple set at gate which is quite quite interesting or at least one of them Albatross! See this, uh, see back in the old days folks, the uh, high frequency aerial, uh, they have to use um, more so uh, the international jets when they fly across the Atlantic where there is a blank spot. Um, Uh, there is a blank spot over the uh, over the Atlantic Ocean where radios, um, the normal uh, digital type of frequency that they use, is non-operational, and they have to uh, um, use high um, frequency um, connectivity, uh, which is what's in is is stored in the tail. But I think also there is there is also um, on some jets, um, the um, on on the uh, on the on the um, leading edge of the uh, winglet as well. Possibly, I don't know, but I know for sure that this silver strip that you see here on the vertical stabilizer is actually a uh, an aerial. You can actually see it's quite well lit up there on that triple seven tail there. Funny memes. Oh. They're still running, you can hear that. Oh, Annalise is uh, is Annalise watching? 
um, one of our regulars here, and Mikey Ved de Erin. Um, Mikey with his whistle. Um, glad to hear from you. Lovely to hear from you, actually, uh, Annalise. Glad to hear you're well. Ellie Morgan, plenty of legroom here in first class. Petreski. Petreski, welcome to on NDC Vegas. Um, Aidan Campbell, Sky Up, Sky Up uh, Airlines, Boeing 737 going to Chisinau. Sure it is. Uh, Michael G. Kelly, never knew that about the aerial. Thanks for the info. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that most of the um, modern jets have an a HF because if you remember the old jumbo jets, they had those big HF aerials on the winglets. You remember them? Um, and of course, later on that was substituted with, the, they had to put the winglets on them. So um, they uh, incorporated it into the tailplane. Um, and there's another design feature um, on the A330, unique to the A330. See the bulge at the bottom of the tailplane there? That's obviously, um, the equivalent of what they've done with these uh, vortex generators, these um, these little nodes that you see there, that's to um, to to, to uh, clean up the airflow across the fuselage and round the back of the fuselage to make sure that the rudder can move freely. Um, and I think that that might be something related to it. That uh, that bulge there almost looks wrong, doesn't it? It looks like a big piece of sort of like filler that you'd stick in your Ford Capri. <laughs> Mike was never that good. Steph, as in when they fly over the North Pole. No, Steph, when they fly over the, um, the, the, the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, there is a blank spot where they lose radio communication, almost like going around the, um, the dark side of the moon. Hello, mate. Do you want to join some of this? Join some of this. Uh, negative. 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 Uh, yeah. Why? What we got? No. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, that's high cirrus, man. Gutted. Isn't that a lovely picture? We've got an AN124 over the top of us, folks. I've got to speak to our what's the name again this evening, can't do a 124. I think we're overdue an AN124 show, aren't we? Stephen Callahan confirming that 124, 132,000 feet to the north of me, uh, which is there. Uh, yeah, we're not going to see it, unfortunately. That's Cirrus, a very high. Cirrus cloud. High flying cormorant, does that, how about that? <laughs> oh, I can't get it. <laughs> David Nolwitschka. Love the views. Good day to you, David. Alex Scarisbrick. Just awoke from my nights and awake to this treat. Great to see you, Alex. You're not dreaming, mate. Russ CT VS. Uh, what time will you be streaming tomorrow? Well, yeah, VS and everybody. It, it, is, it is literally, it is a case of waking up in the morning, making communication with Jilly, coffee, breakfast, briefing, and seeing what the weather is doing at that specific time, um, and what operations they're on, etc, etc. The plan is to get there to the paddock around about uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow. M sorry, no, 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 it won't be. Well, it, it, if, they're, if they're using the southern runway for arrivals, which they have been recently, um, they just shut that. 
to shut that down. Shut that down. APU shut down, engine shut down. I think. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll have to see what um, what they're doing tomorrow. So look out, folks. It's a case of keeping your keeping the app open, keeping Twitter open, um, and also YouTube as well. Because when we are when we decide on a time to go live, uh, we will put a notification out on YouTube. Is that right, Jilly? And we we, we say, um, what, what, what is it? What is the yeah. If we decide, right, we're going to go live, if, if the, the operations are continuing um, as they were... Is there something just touched down on? DHL A330 that I can hear um, sort of taxiing out that I've just heard to my yeah so any it'll be tomorrow afternoon folks it's going to be afternoon t uh, tomorrow that we're going to be live <coughs> uh, we're definitely I've, I've, yeah, I mean I can't imagine that we're not going to be live unless let's see that one for today, have we? That is, I think. Russ CT, oddly enough, I've never flown KLM, but I've heard good things about them, and mostly good. So, yeah, yeah, I've 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 only heard good things about KLM. Um, I have to say, when you're walking through the airport here, and you see the KLM air air crews and and, and cabin crews walking out, uh, either to their aircraft or from their aircraft, they look very smart some of the um yeah they look very smart <laughs> there's the tail of the um corindon 747 and in the corindon that sky bar up there is absolutely fantastic uh, at night now the other thing is that i wanted to show you folks is is the is this panoramic shot down there look you're right in front see right in Right, son. <laughs> oh, is there someone at the door? You've got mail. <laughs> Martin Smith. What's that? Oh, it's just because they're... Oh, well, if you've got a better space to park in, Jilly, that might might be beneficial. Yeah. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, go on. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Look like Bruno Fernandes, Alex Hilton saying. Uh, Lance D, anyone uh, have any opinions of Air France flying them in November? I'll be honest with you, Lance, they're all more or less the same. It really does depend on, um, you know, uh, the person looking after your particular segment of the cabin, if you know what I mean. Um, in general, You'll have, you'll have a good experience. Um, especially the French, they're all, they're all lovely dressers, aren't they? They do like to dress well and fashionistas and stuff like that. Um, oh, hello, listen to this old girl. Victoria Whitlam. 
saying, KLM give out little Dutch ceramic horses full of gin in business class. Husband got me one on the flight to India. Wow. Still waiting to see their 320 Neo. Where's he going? He's gonna go over there, he's gonna go over there, isn't he? Squirrel, that PHBCK uh, right in front of us due to, for a Bangkok run, leaving at 5.05. Uh, for, it was in from Bucharest. It's going to Bangkok. Really? 737? 800 going to Bangkok? Am I missing something here? Is someone going to say, yeah, Jerry, come on, man. 737s fly from um, from Schiphol to Bangkok all the time. I'm like, really? Have I got the wrong one there? Um, yeah, PHBCK squirrel saying. It's going to Bangkok. Blimey, O'Reilly. Fair enough. Uh, Martin Smith, did you see that Boom X1 test flight? Well, it's, 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 you see, that's what people don't... Maybe some people are quite confused. Boom uh, have, have built a test platform which is more like the X1. Do you remember the old X1 fighter or whatever it was? Um, it, it, it certainly doesn't resemble the boom jet. I think they're just experiment. I think it's a an experimental platform, isn't it? That boom. It hasn't flown for the first time in terms of, you know, the actual um, finished. Um, uh, uh, um, you know, it's a single pilot, single piloted um, uh, platform which did fly, albeit for a very short amount of time and at a very low altitude. Um, but look, you know, good luck to them. My only concern is that by the time they actually bring Boom into service, um, it will be more like bust than Boom um, because of the because of the advancements in technology and the way things are going. Um, uh, I mean, and, and not only that, but bear in mind that this Boom platform, yeah, is not the equivalent of Concorde. It's only going to be for um, very lucky fortunate people who can spend a lot of money um, and it, it, I think it's only going to seat seat up to sort of like 50 people um, something like that uh, because it's going to be very beautifully laid out inside the cabin you know lots of space more like a private jet than anything else oh blimey what's going on here what's this guy doing what's that what was that? Did he pick something up? Or did he just... I think that bird... I think that was a bird of prey. And it just... I do hope that whatever that is, is dead. It looks to me like it's a a young bird that's probably been picked up by one of those sparrow hawks which is circling around my head now and uh oh what a, what a show man. at least it's dead that's the main thing Yes, Nick, it is FOD now, isn't it? And, uh, it's only a, a question of time that one of the ground crews noticed that or... Uh... Simon Lai, it's highly unlikely it will ever exist as a working commercial aircraft, but we can still hope because it would be very cool. Indeed, it would be cool. Of course it would. It would be fast, fantastic to see Boom in operation, but 
I, I, you know, you hear one thing, it's a bit like that whole global airlines thing. I mean, it's going to be high fly that are operating it now. Um, Yes, I am, Amsterdam. <laughs> um, oh, well, no, 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 coming in. He was going in to have a look, wasn't he? It's definitely uh, past, yeah, it's definitely dead, in it? It's a, it's a young bird, in it? Oh. But that's life, folks. It's, uh, that's the way the old nature crumbles, isn't it? Mind you, try and make someone aware of that. Good luck with that. Mind you, the, uh, if the um, if the um, if our friends in the medical team are watching, perhaps they might be able to alert someone um, about that. Because you know, it might be a small object, but get that inside an engine, folks. It'll do a bit of damage. You know, possibly get a flame out. Ops vehicles out there. Lovely. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Now, is that a, a what is classified as a retro old um, Transavia livery? I like that. As the jets cross the runways on roll, they do bounce well, Stuart Ross saying. They do, don't they? Um, and what he's talking about there, folks, is there is an intersection. Um, and you will see it, more so on the bigger jets, but you will see it on the smaller jets. Oh, Raptor X, that's the only one left in the old Trans Savia livery. Apparently, it's an old one, isn't it? It's a 700, is it? It's an old 700. Andrew Hickingbottom looks like a money saving website. I quite I really like it. I think I actually prefer it than the current one. Forgive me for saying, all Trans Savia fans. Um, look at it compared to the new one. Look at the tail livery. Good job you weren't here, Jilly. The, the dead birdie on the yeah. Well, the bird of prey came in, was trying to fly with it, but just gave up in the end. Um, he dropped his dinner, yeah. The dead birdie low in the floor. Um, yeah, what is that dip in the runway? Um, you might see it just as they cross the intersection. There it is. And that is the intersecting runway 27 with 18. This is 18 left. 18 left. Um, obviously 18 centre and 18 right being the polder barn all the way out the other side. 
but the uh, runway that this intersects is the uh, what some people call the uh, McDonald's runway which is runway 27 it's only operational in one direction for obvious reasons uh, if you look at the if you look at the geographical layout of um, of, uh, of Schiphol you'll see why they only use that runway uh, one way one way to get one way Hamad Khan I thought I was looking at Pakistan International Airways for a second wow hopefully PIA going to be uh, allowed back to Heathrow in the coming months MDC Vegas potholes watch the wing folks watch the wing Watch him hit the intersection. There it is. Wow. So this should go up pretty quick, I would have thought. Yeah, she's rotating, I think. Isn't she rotating? Yeah, there she goes. Look how quick that wing flexes up, man. Look at that. Big long undercarriage retraction on the A330. Engineers, oh, funky shot, really. Engineers have uh, been working on the A330 undercarriage system um, and on the newer jets uh, we'll be implementing, uh, I think it's a um, nearly a second quicker on the retraction which means they can climb quicker and more efficiently. Um, doesn't sound like a lot, but it makes a lot of difference. Um, usually around about three seconds after wheels off ground is the call for um, positive rate gear up. They give it a little bit of time, make sure the aircraft's happy, uh, and then gear up. Stuart Ross, Singapore slash DHL livery at, Sing at Sydney was lovely. Uh, and of course, uh, Jilly's got a model of that, um, taking um, uh, advantage of that, not asking me if I wanted one, but there you go, never mind. Uh, Matt Cat Lady, uh, <laughs> I bet the uh, ops cars have fun on the intersection, yeah, well, hey! Andre Capello, McDonald's runway used for landings as runway 27 and takeoffs as 09, depending on the weather in full, they might also use runway 27. Oh, so they do use that as a, as a departing runway, the McDonald's runway. Runway. Well, I only said that because I've never seen them uh, using 09s here at the McDonald's runway. Wow, never knew that. No, I'm only joking, man. I was only joking. I'm only joking. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, no, I know, I know. It's cool, man. I've got, I've got too many. I've got too many. Any more? Any more, I've got two more, if you, uh, too many if you know what I mean. According to uh, one of our locals here, I'm guessing that that is one of the old ground towers, is it? Um, of course, I've got, uh, I've got two towers behind me. Let's see, that's, that's very much like Staines International, that tower, isn't it? Look at that. Another, uh, I'm guessing, is that the old tower? I don't know if there's anyone up there. Might be some people behind. Um, maybe, maybe the ground tower. I don't know. Um, and there's the old Fokker over there, which you can walk through, have a look round. I put a sticker on there once, didn't I? And I got, I got slammed for ooh graffiti when loads of other people put stickers on there. <laughs> Uh, Rab H, not much of a gap between the 747s. Wow, that was amazing. So obviously Rab just catching that now. That's that other tiny runway in operation over the other side of the airfield there. They will use that occasionally for uh, regional stuff. But um, Rachel Fanzella, hello Rachel, down there in... Uh, in Sydney, isn't it? She's not, yeah. Early birdie. Claire Bear, Rab H, Kirsty Allen, 
Would anyone pick up on the bump on the runway on the plane or would the suspension suck it up? Uh, no, Kirsty, you will feel it. You will feel the uh, the bump. Um, I might actually be going out of that run. In fact, in fact I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've been out on it before, but um, I must see tonight if I go out on this runway, whether, uh, whether I can... You won't be able to pick it up on the phone. That's the only trouble. There it is. <laughs> Brilliant. Surprised they haven't tried to level that out, you know, like, but it's uh, not that bothered, are they? What's that? Hey? I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before. With those rollers. I've never seen those rollers before. What rollers there? They are, aren't they? Is that rollers or is that... Lance D, A330 conversion, no chin bump, yep. Um, and not only that, but I think all of the A330 freighters. Wow, look at that. What's that all about? Is that some kind of like a loading system? With rollers? It seems to be coming out of the... I'm intrigued. Tracting it. Oh, okay, so it is. Oh, that's pretty smart, isn't it? Just makes it easier for man handling stuff inside the uh, because it, you know, no matter what, man, you're on your knees in there, aren't you? You're not going to be uh, you don't want a bad back doing that, I'm telling you. So obviously they retract that, pull it out and are down and along the uh, the length of the um, the cabin, and they are rollers, much like a, um, a a cargo loading system. Very clever. Can't seem to make their mind. I've never noticed that before. That must. Caden, are you in the view airport viewing area? Taking my son, especially to plane spot on two weeks there, does it catch most of the action? Caden, uh, yes. Uh, f f f well, when you say, does it catch most of the action? Um, obviously, um, in this area, yes, it does. Um, but, obviously there are other positions around the airport uh, Caden and I would very much recommend that you um, you do your research because there's a position at the polder barn very famous if you go to the bit if you go to the um, the the Schiphol website in fact I think Jilly has put the link Jilly has pinned the link on the um, on the chat so you can um, you can see exactly if you hit that link you can see exactly where all the positions are the official positions around Schiphol um, obviously it's very helpful if you've got a, a car you've got a rental or whatever it might be if you come in here for the day especially for the day I would plan out your 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 routes it's very easy to get to the polder barn is a bit of a drive I have to say we've done it on a road trip before um, but it is about a 20 minute drive. Um, I would definitely use a, 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 a sat nav system. Uh, I use Waze and when I put the polder barn uh, spotter plats, um, if you just start typing in polder barn, um, P-O-L-D-E-R-B-A-A-N, um, it will come up on your satellite navigation system in your car 
and you'll be able to uh, uh, navigate straight there. Very, very easy to get to. Um, that position, as well as the McDonald's position, which is on that runway 27. Um, obviously, if you were there now, you wouldn't be seeing very much because there's nothing going on on that runway. Um, and the one thing you do need to bear in mind when you're at Skiphol, um, which all the no locals are very aware of, they do change. I mean, at the moment, fortunately, um, that runway uh, 14, I think it is, is actually not in operation. Um, which, which if there's one runway out of operation, that means that uh, 18 left, which is this runway here, 18 centre, which is over behind us, and 18 right, which is the polder barn, are the main operational runways at the moment. Um, whereas the, uh, the 14, which is where all the, a lot of the cargo flights go out of, uh, which is why we were lucky to see those three 747s going out on the trot, because normally they would go out on 1-4. Uh, Jedi Master Joe has gifted five memberships. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. We've got um, a returning member, Lee Barras. Welcome back, Lee. Great to see you. It's got a start. So did we... Um, did we... Did we um, confirm that this jet, this 737, is going to Bangkok later? I can't, I, I didn't, I, I must, uh, it's either a typo or something or, um, oh, yeah. Someone said it was going to Bangkok Papa Hotel, Bravo Charlo, Charlie Kilo. Roy Van Can, and after that you can go to the Aviation Mega Store, the biggest aviation related store in the EU, in the EU. I don't know where that is. I never went there, not yet. It's going to Madrid. Okay, so he must have accidentally typed something wrong in there, I'm guessing. Yeah, BCK is Bangkok, isn't it? Oh, okay, sorry, he's got it. Okay, he's admitted it. Oh, Stephen Callahan, Air China Cargo, 747, 25 minutes out. Uh, Matthew Thompson has gifted a membership. Thank you, Matthew. Very kind of you, mate. See the, uh, the see the wheel covers, folks, on the 737 because they don't have a um, because they don't have a, 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 a cover, you know, um, a, an undercarriage door like um, conventional um, aircraft do because she's so low to the ground. Uh, the 737, they were unable to fit um, uh, undercarriage doors, so they've got a partial uh, door system, and the rest of it it sort of has to look after itself and that's why they have those wheel covers on them to protect them against grime and mud and and and, 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 and moisture and all that kind of stuff alan Mo alan moss that conveyor is designed to save two people being in the hold you drag it in with you well, there were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there were two people in there, weren't there? There was one guy that was utilising it, but there you go. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's a, that's must be a relatively new system. I've never seen it in um, in hot aeration before, um, and we're just about to get a, a, another example of it coming up. Early birdie, fourteen is the Karg bar. Yeah, we've got a good position at the card barn as well, which um, is, again, another one of the non-official positions. This A330 has just fired up her uh, APU right in front of us. Dutch chips in mayo. Yeah, you get that down at the polder barn.
Uh, Mish, yes, there are toilet facility, uh, facilities at the Polar Barn. Um, you can get an Uber there. Um, you can, yes. Um, if you're relying on Uber all the way throughout your day of travelling here, you need to weigh it up because it might be cheaper to actually rent a car. When I take my car back after being here, I don't put any fuel in it because it goes back full because I do so little mileage. See, watch that bag turn left. Oh, look at that. It's a very simple, a very simple design and yet very efficient because normally there has to be somebody in there. He has to slide them down to be, to his mate. I mean, think how far down inside the aircraft they are, folks. All the way back to the wing route. That's very clever. Hold on a minute. What's my bag doing on there? <laughs> very clever. Very clever indeed. So, about 3.30 where that's headed. Oh, 24, not 14, Mike Delta. Okay. Clever, got the fourth stripe to Something starting up. Uh, Rohit Park, Algeria, is it just me or is the 737 700 a shorter length 737 compared to an 800? Well, yes, Rohit. Um, that is because it is a, just an extension. Is it not? The higher number, the longer the plane. Uh, Joanna B, the A380 does fly to Amsterdam. Oh look, that's Transavia's new 321neo, look. Look at that. Freeman, a uh, dream come true for Paul Freeman, yeah. It is interesting, isn't it, when you see it. When you see it in the news or you see it on Flight Global or you see it on one of the, ch one of the sites, one of the channels, you know, or you see pictures of it and then you get to see it in the flesh. Matt House, can you see the beluga to the east? Uh, I won't because she'll be too high above the clouds for me. Um, it was a toss-up between this and Toulouse. Um, we decided to come here because I kind of wanted to put to bed our concerns about the um, about the uh, the viewing platform here um, because there were railings which were about seven or eight feet out from the uh, from where we're standing, so you had no opportunity to see down. Uh, like we can here, which is great. Especially when they hook them up. Mike Delta, the 737 cargo holder, looks very cramped to work inside. Yeah, well, they can't, um, obviously, they can't uh, stand up in there. See, you know, you have to be prepared to do a job like that where good knee protection, head protection, which they don't by the looks of it. Although I think the uh, I think the roof area is the is actually quite is insulated um, from from bumping heads and stuff like that. Uh, H the three jumbos made it pay off big time, it did, didn't it? I mean, what a what a treat! Uh, Avro Arrow, you also had concerns about viewing areas in Dublin. What's the latest on that score, Avro? Yes, uh, the new um, runway at Dublin. Um, we're hearing that the uh, access there is okay. 
um, it's just the views in terms of to be honest with you I really like the old I really like the old viewing area of Dublin because you know you're sort of like close to the hustle and bustle of the airport aren't you um, but we'll have to try it and see what it's like and it was worth the visit to catch the trio of Queens and you know really lucky really fueling her up certainly weren't expecting it what are your chances eh German Patriot flight number 222 arriving at 222 on Tuesday to Toulouse is a mouthful of a flight wow MD80. Haven't heard much about the XLR lately. It was supposed to enter service earlier this year. Uh, we're talking about the, um, the 321 XLR. Um, I think it might be a little bit late. I don't think that's any uh, any particular issue with certification. Uh, they've already done demonstration flights with it around the world. Um, so. Uh, China 747 francs of June 8 minutes. That will land on centre or right. Uh, I'd imagine 1 8 centre or 1 8 right. Oh, hello. Nice, nice. He's just coming, isn't he? Looking down there on the fueler, um, the fuel rig, the, uh, the mixture of fuel is uh, Jet A1. And that's a blend of fuels. Kerosene is one of the main additives um, into the, the blend of Jet A1, which gives it that uh, lovely sweet smell, I have to say. This. That's really cool that they've done that with the, uh, the flight deck like that. Caroline T has gifted 10 memberships. Now folks, bear in mind, um, as I said right at the get-go when we got here, um, we're only here until five o'clock. They shut the doors here at five o'clock. Um, we will have to literally, I'm gonna run it right the way through until I'm told to leave. Um, but, uh, but then what I'm gonna do is, I've got to pack my bag and literally go and check it in uh, and then I'm going to be heading sort of like over there or thereabouts. Um, this is a long walk all the way through here and down through there. But I'd imagine that I'm going to be out over the other side. But we'll find a, a decent spot to film from. And uh, we'll carry on our little escapade here in Schiphol. Um, once I... Oh, oh, smell that. Roy Van Can, I think the Air China cargo jet will go on centre. All the inbound from the east or south will be vectored to the centre runway. There we go, thank you. Blue Sky, Roy Van Can, Oliver Hill just joined. Good afternoon, Oliver. This is the um, water services here. Um, it's, I think, also the same place where the, um, what they call the honey wagon, uh, where they drain out all the... Um, 
and stuff. Um, but, um, but that's the water truck. That's, uh, I'm guessing refilling the, uh, the fresh water. Not drinking water, I wouldn't have thought. Just fresh water for uh, for washing and the um, toilets and all that kind of stuff. I'd imagine. Cam MD80, thank you, Craig Charles. It's not the Craig Charles, is it? Um, Aiden Cam, I was just about to renew my backup profile before I was gifted out about that. Brian Stewart, would well, love to see the radio wind run a fly one day. Massive plane would carry wind turbines. Radio wind run. Gaz Grill, good afternoon. Chris B8. Has anyone been to Miniature Wonderland in Hamburg? This shot in the lighting looks like their airport. Yeah, I tell you what. Well, uh, Miniature Wonderland is actually a, a mock up of Hamburg, isn't it? Um, and it is great, man, um, honestly. I mean, the airport, let's be honest with you, um, the airport at Miniature Wonderland is just one of many. Um, uh, uh, exhibits or um, what are they called dioramas. I think I don't take that to take that bag off just because uh, there's people around. Here. JS626. Mustang. I flew to Kiev from my right from Glasgow to D3. Didn't take long to get to the other aircraft. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, in terms of the gate, um, it's uh, it's a hell of a long walk if you're uh, if you if you're gating down here um, to baggage claim. I can assure you, um, it's a pleasant walk. Don't get me wrong. It's not like you know, it's only five minutes if that. But it's a fair old trek. I think it is the poo truck. I think it is water. There are the poo truck, the honey wagon, as they call it, and the and the water vehicle do actually look very similar. Henry S. Executive Jet. CG Hill tuning in from Charleston, Nevada. Wow, or Nevada. Martin Smith, Admiral Aaron, Joanna B, Ian Morrison, Kev Miller. Hope you're all doing well. Yeah, this was just literally a, a sort of like suck it, see exercise today, folks, to see um, about the, because I've been, you know, obviously since the first time we came here to Schiphol, all those years ago and had those crazy problems trying to uh, connect here we go now these uh, these these pilots are very aware they're regular out of here so they're very aware of people watching from up on the terrace so we might get away let's just give it a try shall we because they will push back facing us. Don't you love that profile of a 737 windscreen man? Chiseled as someone said earlier. See ya. 
too busy uh, setting everything up. Ross, super tugs. Yeah. I mean, obviously, what you've got to bear in mind, folks, is that, you know, um, you say one thing, Stuart, about them uh, super tugs, towing them all the way to the, uh, to the, to the entry point of the, the runway. Um, they will have to still have to start their engines um, prior to their arriving at that, um, at that point. Uh, a lot of aircraft, a lot of operators, like we did with British Airways today, will start their number two engine, um, both on the small and the large aircraft, uh, to conserve fuel, save fuel, uh, not just for the, uh, for, the, for the environmental footprint, but also for saving fuel themselves. It's amazing when you think of the amount of fuel and money that you could save over the period of 12 months with an entire fleet of aircraft if you start one engine uh, later than the other. Obviously, you need one to taxi on, and the other one can remain unstarted until you're, you know, sometime up the taxiway. Um, but these super tugs, so to speak, I'm really, I mean, I did read something about that a, a while ago, um, that apparently that, would, that, that might happen. But, oh, they're going to experiment with it, maybe, I don't know. But, um, you know, what would the benefit be? Is the question because obviously, you know, um, when you're uh, oh, this poor little birdie, look, he's down there, look, he's on the he's dieted. Poor little birdie, he's still dieted. You want to watch out, mate, because that might be ingested. It can quite easily be ingested if they, uh, um, I know. He died, he says it. You know where he's picked that up from, don't you, Jerry? He's picked that up from the, from from the one of the one of the. Um, oh, okay. Avro arrow. These close-ups are super. Awesome. Rainy and foggy Switzerland, wow. A <laughs> bride Stuart funny, Dave Mack. If you're thinking of doing Anchorage later in the year, seeing like um, those 747s likes it. On, honestly, um, we are we are on April. Um, it was April, wasn't it, Jilly, that I was was I on the snow mound in April? Or was it still snowy? The snow had gone. Yes, yes, and I took too much with me, didn't I? I was prepared for freezing cold temperatures, and it was actually quite, it was quite warm. Yeah. I did, I did, I did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Would it be, um, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to look into that. Um, what date was it? What date was it we went to Anchorage last April? I love how those engines are flat on the bottom, something so pleasing about the shape, Roxy Simmons saying. Well, that's another ground clearance thing, isn't it? They're almost like they've been squashed, isn't it? Um, the uh, CFM and even the, uh, you know, the underside of the leap engine as well has, has got a um, flat bottom to it. Crazy, isn't it? 
William Ormerod. This one off to Manchester. I think. Uh, oh, was it? Oh, was it? Interesting. April 28th and 29th. Wow, 10 minutes left, folks. 10 minutes. But, I mean, it's it's not over fully over. Oh, look at that lovely old thing. Look. Try jet. And that's Lady Hull confirming to Salt Falcon about to cross the runway. There it is. Lovely old girl. Falcon 900. Lovely old thing, mate. Look, look at that. What, was it August? Was it April? Oh, yeah, right, 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 yeah. Conditions there. <laughs> was it completely clear, wasn't it? It was summer, wasn't it? Yeah. Blood Flame Raptor, that's a cool jet, it is, isn't it? It's got an old look about it. I did, I did, I did. I did. Yes, yes. E class. Lots of people loving that, uh, loving that Falcon jet. Definitely uh, sets itself out from the uh, from the others, doesn't it? Tony Duty loving it. It's going to Paris. Squid Air was saying. Kev Miller. You never know the model, just the manufacturer. Some people the other way round, aren't they? Dessault, isn't it? Is it Dessault, Falcon? Jedi Master Joe, some of the Falcon jets have their interiors finished out in Little Rock, Arkansas. Not from where I live, wow. First used uh, in 19, September 1984. Old school man. O'Malley baby three holder. Ian Morrison, Captain Charlie. Um, Emirates Triple Seven taxi. Oh, hello! Here we go. I see how they've jacked, jacked that up, folks. Uh, Dassault. Oh, is it Dassault? Dassault, Dasso, is it? I've never heard of anyone. I've never heard of anyone pronounce it that way. I always remember Raymond Baxter calling it the Dassault Falcon. Or Dassault Falcon. Anyway, look how many blades are in those engines, folks. It's the old style blades. Nowadays, the modern engines have like half the number of blades in them, just bigger blades. It's going to push him all the way back to the right now. Oh, he's starting his number one, I think. Is he rolling up his number one? Now watch this, folks. This is the uh, lift and pull mechanism that they're using on this tug particular type of uh, system that they use that front undercarriage is jacked up by the tug on hydraulic systems you hardly notice it when it lowers it to the ground oh, it's pushing him a long way isn't he? he's starting his number one Martin Smith mini try stuff I like that
salt of the earth. Now you're going to see it very slightly. In fact, you can hardly even know. There it goes. There it goes. Lowering it now. It's a very small amount. It's only like, only jacks it up by about 600 mil or something like that. There it goes, jacking it all the way down now, or dropping it. Drop it. Now the hooks will un will disengage, and she'll drive away. Literally as simple as that. Probably more than 600 mil, I'd say probably about a foot and a half, something like that. Spencer Byford has looked inside that uh, private jet. Wow, look at this. Caroline Teague. I've got Caroline on the team. Gifted memberships, haven't I? Where's he going? Oi! See the bulge on the vertical stabiliser even more now. See the base bulge there. That's a vortex directional flow equipment or something like that. I don't know, but um, basically it, it directs the airflow around and um, smoothly past the vertical, uh, past the rudder uh, to um, to give it. Minimise the amount of pressure on the rudder, I think. GG, loving the spot for filming. Squirrel, no time to go to the coffee shops. Well, no, not really, because I'm here for such a short time. Um, oh, I see what you mean, yeah, no, no, we don't do any of that, mate. Yeah, sorry, I thought you meant over here. Yeah, 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 I know it's uh, I've walked straight into that one. Oh, Debash! Howdy all, cool vantage point it is, isn't it? Lots of people who've been with us for many, many years have never experienced this uh, this position up at um, the Polar Barn. Of course, um, let's face it, last time we were here was pre-COVID, wasn't it, Jilly? Are you closing? Yeah. Yeah, we're close. Okay. It's almost the strike of love. Okay. All right, let's wrap it up. Oh, that might have gone up. I might have got a bit of flicker there, Jilly. Might have got a bit of flicker. Right, folks. We're gonna clip. We're gonna pack everything up, and we'll. Um, I'll, once I put it all in the bag, we, I'm gonna head off down in there, check my bag in, and then we're uh, then we're gonna be. Um, 
enjoyed a little bit from in there. So uh, take it easy, see you in a little bit. Look out for um, updates. Cheers. Okay, GP.